All right, so welcome everyone. This is the day 25 of SOC 30 days challenge. 30 days SOC challenge, okay? If you haven't joined the challenge yet, you can find the description, link in the description below. Let's quickly start with the day 25, which is introduction to digital forensic. It's gonna be a really, really interesting day and challenge and the task as well. Let's begin. First, understand what is digital forensics. Digital forensics is basically the entire process. It's a science of identifying and identifying, preserving, analyzing, and presenting all the digital evidences uh, in a very, very legal format, okay? So whenever a cyber attack happen, it's a job of digital forensic specialist or DFIR engineers to actually identify those artifacts and then preserve them securely so that it is not infected by anybody else or uh, maybe by the by the environment itself and then performing the analysis analyzing the data and then coming up with the report okay it also involves recovering or examining the data if let's say there was a ransomware happened you know on the machine so it's it's a job of dig uh, digital forensics specialist to recover the data maybe it was lost in an accident so it's a job of digital forensic specialist to recover the data as well okay the goal of digital forensic is to identify and preserve the digital evidence second to reconstruct the timeline of digital activity what all happened when exactly it was happened let's say there was a cyber attack happened uh, through a laptop so it's a job of digital forensic specialist to recover that laptop and then all the data from the browser history, memory, network activity, and then understand what was happened in that period of time, what website being accessed by that specific users and uh, what exactly that user did, you know, throughout that period. So determining the root cause of the incident, supporting the legal or administrative actions as well. Now, there are different types of digital digital forensics we have linux forensics where we in investigate the linux system their logs their memory and file integrity there are multiple tools available we have audit d grep cape uh, cap and uh, kvml so we'll be using kvml in this lab we have windows forensics window forensics windows forensics is analyzing the registry uh, event logs a prefetch file metadata okay uh, windows and linux are not so different especially i mean they are different especially the way the file system has been defined right we have registry system in the in the windows which consists of different structure for user system hardware and everything with linux it's all managed by the system system itself right then uh, we have different tools we have ftk manager imager sorry uh, we have Registry Explorer, CAP, and other tools. Then for mobile forensics, mobile forensics is all about recovering the data from a mobile phone. Maybe a deleted data, call logs, chats, WhatsApp chat, everything. We have network forensics, which is to capture and analyze the real-time packets, logs, intrusion, trash, traces as well. So this could be done by most popular tool, Wireshark, TCP Dam, Zeek, Suricata. Then we have memory forensic, which is very popular. And uh, this gives a lot of information about what was happened in that period of time. This is the live RAM acquisition, okay? So we actually take the volatile memory uh, acquisition. So volatile memory is basically, you know, always require power. And when your system restart, the, the volatile memory data get erased. So it's very sensitive, okay? There are many tools available for acquiring, for collecting those data and analyzing it. For collecting those data, we have KVML. For analyzing, we have volatility. There are a few more. Recall, I think this is no longer being used. We have Lime, which is still in use. We have Cloud Forensic, which is to investigate the cloud logs, API, storage, uh, other activity as well. We have different inbuilt tool on the cloud itself like AWS, CloudTrail, GCP logs, Sentinel and other tools. IoT forensics in a similar way. Okay. 
I highly suggest you go through all the tools and um, you know this entire document yourself, right? Then we let's talk about the digital forensic process. It all starts with the identification. This is where you detect the potential sources of evidences, compromise systems, suspicious process. Then you have preservation. You isolate and protect the system from getting tampered. Okay, so that's your second job. Third job is to collect, to acquire the data. Okay, let's say you want to acquire memory data. Memory, we call it as memory dump. So that process is called acquisition. If you want to collect the volatile data, which is good, which could be RAM data, so that, that's the volatile memory acquisition. If you want to collect the hard disk itself, the non-volatile data, uh, which will not, which will not erase even if you restart the machine. So that's non-volatile data. As a digital forensic specialist, your job is to first focus on volatile data because that's very sensitive, right? Next, you need to analyze the data once if examine the data to uncover any malicious activity, indicators, artifacts. At the end, you work on reporting. You work on, um, you know, document all the findings, timelines, screenshots, logs, and everything. All right. Let's work on the lab setup. This lab is all about acquisition. So we will talk about how can we acquire a memory, uh, non-volatile memory information from any Linux machine. Let's say I have infected machine or target machine, I want to collect the memory dump, okay? And then I want to analyze it on my analysis machine, digital forensic machine. So for this, we'll be, we need to have two machines. We need to have a target machine. In our case, that will be Ubuntu. And the analysis machine, that's again the Ubuntu machine. We'll be using ABML, it's a tool by Microsoft. And then we will acquire the memory dump using the uh, ABML tool, okay? So let's begin. Um, give me one second, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I, I, you can see I have two machine. I have a forensics machine on here, okay? Uh, which you can say analysis machine and this is my target machine, okay? So now um, on the target machine, I first have to create the memory dump, okay? So to create the memory dump, I need the AVML. Sorry, I think this is not KVML, this is AVML. So uh, let's download, uh, let's first download the tool. So we'll use the, uh, you know, we will use the wget command to download the file from the GitHub repository. Perfect. It's been downloaded. You can see the AVML here. Then we need to make sure we grant uh, permission to execute. So we'll do the ch mode plus x and then the AVML, right? Perfect. It's done. Now you can also validate by AVML help. Now, um, we can skip that. Now let's create a memory dump. This will create a memory dump copy of your existing Linux machine. Okay. So to do that, let me maximize this. To do that, what we need to do is basically run dot slash AVML and then give a name for this forensic memory dump file. Okay. So I'll, I'll say Linux memory dot mem file this is the format of the file right hit enter this will create a memory dump perfect can you see this a memory dump has been created you can also validate what's what's there inside okay using the string command so you can see this will be a lot of data inside i think yeah uh strings oh, sorry it's not string it's strings okay so you can see these are all the strings in this data and you can also find out the space uh, ls minus l for this data which is this this is the size of this memory dump okay now the next step is we want to collect this acquire this memory dump on our forensic machine on our analysis machine so what we need to do is we need to we need to get the we need to run the SCP command here. So we'll run the SCP, okay, and then mention the user, the target machine IP address. So go to target machine, run if config. This is the IP address of the target machine. 
and then um, specify the location of the memory dump. And this is a slash in, in the root file, right? So we'll say slash root, then slash name of the file, which is Linux memory dot NEM, right? Now, once it is done, then you can specify your local local storage, which will be, I want to store in the root itself and then specify the name of the file. Perfect. Let's hit enter. It will ask you for the password of your target machine. So I'll enter the target machine password. It's taking some time. Awesome. Let's do the LS. Wonderful. Can you see this? Now I have the forensic, the memory dump file from target machine to my forensics machine. Now I can use different tools like volatility three to analyze this memory dump file and understand what was the connection being established on this machine. What is the files, uh, everything about that period of time that, you know, that has been executed by the machine. I'll get a detail about all of this information and this memory dump. I hope this was useful. We'll catch you in the next video.